Hey everybody, Jim Powers once again as we have our next post-game uh, press conference in Northwest Missouri State, the defending national champions. They defeat West Liberty by a score of 98 to 77. And starting things off is their outstanding student athlete, Ryan Hawkins. 32 points tonight, Ryan, and had to feel good to get out there, get things going, and get a W tonight in the quarterfinal. Yeah, I did. Uh, I felt like we come out pretty slow defensively, especially. Uh, just gave up a lot early. The first five minutes was not our best effort uh, on defense. Um, you know, we prepared all week for the press. We knew that was coming. Um, but just down the stretch defensively, we got stops, and it was uh, – enough to get the dub. Couple questions for you, Ryan, all, uh, from our uh, media. This is from John Walker. Uh, this was your 13th 30 point performance of your career. What was working for you on the offensive side of the court today? Uh, the press got them in rotation a lot. So I felt like I had a lot of rotation threes. Um, turned down a couple that I wasn't quite comfortable with because I didn't want Mac to get too upset with me tonight. But uh, uh, no, um, just transition. Uh, you know, kick out threes. It's what, you know, best shot in basketball is. And I felt like our offense tonight got a lot of those for everybody. Uh, our next question comes from uh, Chris Roush. Uh, what was the biggest key for you in the offense to be able to be as effective as you were? And there was a point where you guys were shooting over 70% from the field tonight. Uh, just staying calm in that press. They try to speed you up uh, and bait you into taking some average shots and we want to make sure we were getting good shots all night and I felt like we did that for the most part all night uh, everything was at the rim or an open look our next question comes from Andrew uh, Wegley uh, the winning game in the Elite Eight by the margin you did today against such a good high scoring offense what's that like and, and how are you feeling out there I mean it was fun it was another opportunity to play basketball um, but I Felt like just another game. Uh, it's winter go home at this point, so you got to bring your best. And we weren't at our best to start, but we got it corrected and uh, went on a little bit of run there in the first half. Uh, from Jacob Long, 32 points is your postseason career high. What did it mean to have that kind of performance in a big game like this against the very talented West Liberty team? I don't know that it means any more than anything else. Uh, it was just uh, getting good looks for my teammates all night, uh, a lot of drive and kick threes um you know felt like we just played really well offensively all around tonight you know talk about the guys that that you know once again you know trevor gets 23 diego gets 14 just once again an all-around team effort for you guys talk about just the game plan and how you guys were just able to you know keep things going and, and get everybody involved in the offense tonight you know wes and luke just do such a good job of spreading the floor for the diego and trevor uh, cause you can't leave Wes and Luke at all. Uh, just opens everything up offensively. And then when you've got two guards that are as elite as Trevor and uh, Diego, you know, you're not gonna be able to guard those two one-on-one. -on -one. You're gonna have to bring help from somebody. Uh, and the people to help off of are all shooters. So it kind of kind of creates some issues for the defense. Uh, from Tommy Rizak, Dalton Bolton is one of the best players in the country. What was the key to slowing him down and limiting an offense that averages over 100 points? And I mean, it was just a total team defensive effort. Uh, just being on our gaps on defense. Uh, we just played our defense. Um, you know, we had a week, week to prepare for it, uh, but we just went and stuck true to who we were and what we do defensively. Um, and we slowed them down quite a bit and gave them enough fits. How big has Jackson been the last two games with Diego getting in foul trouble? Oh, it's awesome to see a freshman come off the bench with that much confidence. Uh, and he's earned that confidence every day in practice. Uh, you know, when you go against Trevor and Diego every day on defense, uh, you know, kind of gives you a little bit of confidence when you get in a game that's easier in the game than it is in practice. Awesome stuff, Ryan. Thanks so much for the time. We appreciate it. Congratulations. Great job tonight. And good luck tomorrow in the semifinal. Thank you very much. All right, everybody, Ryan Hawkins, and now we'll have uh, Coach uh, Ben McCollum step in. <clears throat> Coach, how you doing? I'm good. How about yourself? Doing great. Congratulations on a terrific victory tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll let you make some opening uh, remarks. And just so uh, members of the media know as well, uh, the first three, um, the first three quarterfinal games, 
with the teams reaching 90 points, it's only happened four times in Elite Eight history. Um, I'll have those dates for you here in a little bit. So, you know, Coach, talk about just your offense just absolutely clicking from the word go today. Yeah, I think the, the press helped a lot with that. Uh, obviously, they were in rotation a lot. Um, you know, when you when you press uh, a guy's team with a couple point guards, it, it helps, and they were able to handle it a little bit. I thought to start, we were a little bit shell-shocked, and then once we calmed down, we were able to get them in rotation. We were able to get kick-out threes and, and open layups and, and be able to finish them um, in transition. So, you know, obviously, then you got to hit the shots as well. But, uh, you know, I was proud of our kids' effort. and was proud of the week of practice that we had going into it. And, um, you know, now we're on to the next. Did you realize at one point you guys were shooting over 70% from the field? I thought we were shooting pretty good. Um, you know, I, again, it's – it's when you can get a team in rotation a lot, you know, that helps um, because you're able to get a little bit easier looks either in transition or, or just kickouts and stuff like that. So um, I thought our kids played poised. You know, we took the shots that we should take. He did, we didn't take a lot of the tweener, you know, because they'll bait you into some kind of those tweener shots. Like, should I take this or should I not? If you think in that, then you shouldn't take it. And, um, you know, I thought our kids did a good job of handling that tonight. Let's go to some questions uh, from the media that's joining us, Coach. Uh, this is from John Walker. Uh, this was the highest scoring offense in Division II basketball. What went into holding the Hilltoppers into one of their worst performances of the season? Yeah, I think just just really guarding them. You know, I don't think there's any any you know rocket science to 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 guarding somebody. Um, you just have to be active. You have to guard the basketball. You have to keep them out of the paint. Um, that sort of thing. And I thought even till. You know, so um, I thought we really guarded them up till about the last oh, eight to 10 minutes or so. Then we kind of backed off a little bit. But yeah, no, I, I thought our kids were up for the challenge. And, you know, anytime a team that prides themselves on defense um, gets an opportunity to play somebody that averages that many points, you know, I, I think they take it on themselves to be able to get stops. Uh, from Joe Dykstra, you kind of answered, answered a little bit, but, you know, West Liberty gives different challenges in the way they play. What was the key to making those adjustments, both offensively, and you just kind of talked a little bit about the defensive side? Yeah, I think it's our kids. Um, you know, anytime you pay, play, uh, play a press, uh, you know, I, I heard somebody say once, you, you need to make sure you put the cognitive weight of the game on your on your team and on your personnel. And, and our kids, I put it all on them. Um, I put the defense on them. I put the offense on them, and, you know, because you can't really call anything because everything's so sped up. So you just have to trust that they're just going to play. And that's really all we did. Like, I don't I don't even remember calling any set whatsoever other than the press breaker. And that was it. And, um, you know, again, I, I thought our kids did a good job of of accepting that responsibility and, and doing it themselves. Uh, from John Walker, what's it like uh, when you go to that three guard lineup? What advantages does it give you against other teams? Um, with the three point guards? Yeah. Um, you know, I think defensively is where it's at because then we got feet movers. I mean, those guys move their feet. Um, and then obviously, uh, all of them can get paint, finish, and and Isaiah kind of adds a different dynamic where he can cut, get get defensive rebounds, offensive rebounds, and he was. He was unreal uh, in that first half. That's a hard situation to come in and play like that. You know, sometimes we put Diego back in with two. We just, we absolutely needed him that second half because I knew it was going to, you know, these, these pressing games, they take, you know, five hours, you know, it just takes forever. And so um, I knew we needed him rested and, and we got him rested. And then uh, he was able to close the game for us. Uh, from John Dykstra, um, can you provide an update on Byron's injury? Um. Yeah, I don't, I don't, we don't know yet. Um, I, you know, hopefully he'll be, um, it doesn't seem, I guess I don't, I don't know. Um, hopefully, hopefully we can try to get him back, but we'll find out. Uh, from Chris Roush, what's the, uh, been the biggest key for Ryan Hawkins to turn into be one of the best players in the country? I mean, he just works at it, you know, I mean, he's, he's in the gym constantly. Uh, he's got great energy. He's got a great attitude. Um, and he's got guards that set him up. The offense is perfect for what he does. He's just a good player. I mean, there's nothing earth shattering that that made him that good other than just work, you know, and that's that's what he does. He works hard and he's always in a good mood. And that's what happens. Uh, from Andrew Wegley, um, 
when you saw uh, Byron go down in the second half, did you think back at all to a Mercyhurst game here two years ago when you lost Joey? No, because we were up 25 or so. So, no, not really. Um, um, no. Yeah, I mean, the first half was a little bit because you played Isaiah, who, you know, again, for the first 15 games of the year, he didn't play. I mean, he didn't play a minute. And so, um, you know, you throw him out there and he does a, does a great job. Uh, from Michaela Day, now that you're Final Four bound, what's the message in the locker room after the win? On to the next. Got to find a way to be able to win the next game and, and just – Survive, survive in advance. From John Walker, when uh, you guys had talked earlier this week, you said the first game of the Elite Eight is usually the toughest, and we actually talked about that when we had our conversation last week. Great conversation too, Jim. You know, I'm glad you enjoyed that. I mean, it always is. If, if <laughs> you would ask some questions to Colin, it would have even been better. <laughs> no doubt about it. <laughs> um, what does it say to your team to win the game by such a lofty margin, especially the first game in the Elite Eight? Yeah, you just win. You know, I, I think it's, you know, neither of us has played outside of a region. And so we pose, you know, all day they play as a, a different threat to us with the press that we don't see ever. They don't see the half court teams a ton in their league either. And so it's just such contrasting styles. And, um, you know, it was kind of a battle of wills who was going to win. And, and uh, we were fortunate enough to do it. Uh, from Jacob Lang. Uh, what can you say about Ryan's performance tonight to lead the offense? I mean, he put up 32 and just had a, you know, one of those stat line stuffer type of nights. Yeah. Um, you know, I was happy he did it. <laughs> it, was, it was like I could coach. That's the, that's the beauty of that. Now he's, you know, he's a good player. Just like we said earlier, he, he works at it and deserves it. And, you know, our two guards handling that press the whole game is, you know, it's exhausting. And you know, obviously Trevor's one for five. And, um, you know, I think he'll shoot a lot better next game. Short turnaround. We all know how you've been down this road before. You know, what, what's the drill for tonight? Get the guys some food and kind of watch the, the last game and figure out how you're going to go about your business in the late semifinal tomorrow night? Yeah, pretty much. Just I'll stay up all night. The guys will get some their beauty rest and they're a lot better looking than me. So they need plenty of beauty rest and um, we'll find a way. And it's just a quick turnaround, quick scout. Everybody's tired this time of year. You just survive in advance. No doubt, Ben. Congratulations. Great win tonight. Once again, always great talking to you, and we'll do it again tomorrow night. All right. Thank you, Jim. Appreciate it. No problem. Head coach Ben McCollum joins us. Uh, once again, members of the media, we are going to uh, drop off of this page, re-log in, and we'll have the great folks from West Liberty joining us here in a moment. Thank you for joining us for our post-game press conference.